Okay, this is uh, the difference between um, the different forms of uh, writing of scre screenplays, novel, and stage plays. And I'm Stacy Bender, also known as H.B. Hatter. And this is Reed, also known as Dragon. Um, and I'm all of a sudden taking, doing a total blank. Okay, the basically some of the differences between the, the three different mediums um, is stage plays tend to be um, more um, verbose. Uh, you get a lot of talking, a lot of monologues. Uh, people express uh, various feelings. Um, so they're they're because you're on you're on a stage. Um, screenplays are more visual. Um, I'm getting a somebody's asking me something. Switching mods. Okay. <laughs> um, screens tend screenplays tend to be more visual. Um, form of, of writing, and then, of course, novel writing, you basically get to climb into somebody's head, basically, and, and go through their emotions and what they're thinking. Um, and so basically, these are, um, no pun intended, three totally different animals. And um, one of the difference is, is um, between the writing is with novel writing, you can, you can do first person, second person. Yes, that is a thing. Uh, third person, omniscient. Um, whereas in screenplays, everything tends to be um, uh, present tense. Um, and, um, you know, I should have wrote notes. <laughs> uh, and it's it's very, um, I would say a rigid, more rigid form of writing. You have to be very, very precise. Um, there's not a lot of wiggle room. Like in novel writing, you can, you can be Victor Hugo and spend the entire chapter Describing the city. I don't recommend it though. Um, but in screenwriting, screenplay writing, you have four lines. I'm not talking sentences, four lines to describe a scene. Um, and part of the, what? Well, I was going to say that um, even though you may not want to create a, a screenplay, you don't want you know your thing turned into a movie. By going through the the uh, you know, functions of actually trying to write a screenplay has changed the way we write novels. It tends to focus you and boil you down. So many times we have seen uh, young writers, you know, this is my first time and I'm going to write something. And it sounds like they're writing down what happened as they're watching a TV program. Or, uh, oh, I don't know, all kinds of, of writing things that, when you're writing a novel, uh, you, you're very free form, but there are things that you should not do. You should not make it sound like a stage play. Um, and if you don't know the difference, you could fall into a trap. So there has been a, a book that really opened our eyes to a lot of these things. Okay. Well, it's called the screen, uh, Screenwriter's Bible. It's, I know it looks like a big, big, uh, big book, but it's actually uh, five books in one. Um, and the first, first book in it does happen to talk about the various, um, you know, what it takes to, to write a novel and, or not, I should say, write any story, you know, because it talks about uh, the, cli uh, the climax, the, the different, um, the crisis, the catalyst, the big event, uh, you know, the, 
in, in the end, it's the realization. Um, but it also, um, also the other sections, they talk about screenwriting format and how to market it. Now, one of the things that I wanted to point out between the, the three forms of writing is you can have a lot of characters in a novel. Um, and it all depends on how much you feel that your audience can hold on to um, as to how many characters you want to, to go crazy on. Um, from what I understand, Game of Thrones, they've go through a lot. Um, no, I've not read that one. Uh, whereas in screenplays and stage plays, um, it is very rare for a stage play to have characters that's that's the max that they will will um say for a stage play uh because anybody uh more than that is usually a you know a stage hand you know walking across the, the stage or a a um a local um um chorus you know just for the you know mu um uh, singing in the background um partially because it's hard to get eight people together at one time and partly because you usually have to pay your actors. <laughs> and that holds true with screenplays. Um, money is always an issue when it comes to characters in a screenplay. So you want to keep those down to a minimum. Yes, there are those uh, screenplays that do have an, an ensemble cast. Um, Eight. I said eight is the max that I that I know of. Usually it's a lot less. Um, one of the stage plays I wanted to mention was um, a Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. And you have the main character, you have his two love interests, and the fourth character or the fourth actor in the entire play plays every other character while they end up getting you know all get murdered off but he he then plays uh, all the other the cast members um which it's it's actually a fun fun uh, play uh done correctly um now in a screenplay um it it, it varies but you want to keep it to a smaller um, because unless you are a big name, ensemble cast is probably not going to get you very far. Now, Stacy, uh, would you say that, yeah, even if you're not writing a, um, a screenplay, mm -hmm. you want to keep your, your characters limited? Uh, how many times have we seen, you know, eight characters introduced on page one? Yeah, and when it when it comes to a novel, you when you when you do introduce a lot of characters, kind of trying, you know, when you have a lot of characters, try and trickle them um, out a little, so that the person, your reader, can absorb who who's there, who's important, who's an NPC, because um, you really don't want to overload somebody. Um, and I, I know it's it's. Sometimes it's hard because you know you have all these these interesting characters that you want to show somebody. Um, but I didn't want to really get into into that a lot because we do have a lot of writing panels, and I'm quite sure somebody will you know, talk about that. And I wanted wanted to more center across uh, on the on the the, um, the screenplays a bit. Okay. Um, screenplays are very very formulaic. Um, the reason being, you have 90, uh, 90 to 120 minutes to do a movie. And for a screenplay, each page is, represents a minute in uh, storytelling. So your, your screenplay is going to be anywhere from 90 to 120 minutes. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where... Uh, there is a formula, a format. If you don't follow the format, no one's going to look at your stuff. Um, and they even have, 
I have a program for that. <laughs> and there's a certain way you have to put in your descriptions. There's a certain way you have to put in your actions. Um, who's talking? Um, what are they going to say? Uh, and that's another thing. You don't want to do in a, in a screenplay, you don't want to have a lot of repetitive words. You want them quick. You want them snappy. You want to deliver the information. And you don't want to repeat because you have such a limited time to do something. Um, and I, and um, so there, there's it, th this thing also explains a lot about that too, about the formatting and it even it, it even um, goes into how to market your screenplay once you do write it. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you can't break the rules until you, you know what the rules are. And quite honestly, screenwriters uh, Bible, because it is the boiled down nuts and bolts, no fluff. Um, it gives you all the rules really quick, really easy. If anybody's interested in writing a screenplay, I would definitely pick up this book. I don't know if any screenwriter that doesn't have this book, it, some edition. And, you know, I, I think just about every library has a copy. Uh, used bookstores probably have old copies they would love to get rid of. Um, otherwise, it can be a little expensive. Uh, the one, the edition I have, I, it cost me about 25 bucks. And it's already outdated. But even the old editions will give you a, an idea of what you have to go through to do a, a, a screenplay. And as I said, it's very formulaic. The more recent editions are, um, would probably have a lot of the, the new technology um, like uh, Zoom and Skype and how to, you know, write in there, how to, how to um, do the text. If, you, if someone is texting in, in a movie, you're seeing a lot of that nowadays. And um, another thing, if you do, once you write your screenplay, you do not sell a screenplay, you option it. And what that means is, um, you get, a, you, you get money for, if someone wants your screenplay, they give you money and, or, and they have a set period of time in order to make this movie, or you can sell it to somebody else. Um, odd note, most screenplays that are option never get made into movies. The reason being, there are so many factors involved. Um, you can write out a beautiful screenplay and by the time it goes through someone who, uh, a director, a producer, um, the marketing guy, uh, the rewrites, uh, the actors, um, it, if it ever does make it to a actual movie, it probably won't look like you envisioned. Um, we actually knew somebody who they were all set, ready to, to, to run with this screenplay. You know, everybody loved the, uh, loved the entire thing all the way up to the ending. And then the marketing guy said, but I can't sell X amount of toys if we have this ending. I cra crashed the entire project. Um, so yeah, things like that do happen. Um, another thing, um, especially if you're getting, you know, just getting involved and do decide to do screenplays, um, there are contests out there. Um, I know I showed you this uh, program, uh, Final Draft is one of the big programs, uh, screen, screenplay writing programs. Uh, they also have a contest every year. And it, uh, the submissions, I believe, are from January to like June. Um, well, they have an option where if you pay X amount of money, you can get advice from a professional on the screenplay that you wrote. So... One thing I will say, um, if you if you do go for the hey, I want to get feedback, 
make sure you get it in like January and February uh, where the people who are reading this stuff are um, still have all their marbles and haven't gone through everybody's screenplay. Because if because we actually knew somebody who wanted the feedback, but they waited for the last day, last hour, I think even the last five minutes in which to push the button and send their screenplay off. And they sent in a Western and got information back on a sci-fi. So yeah, if you want advice back on your screenplay, make sure you uh, get one of these uh, contests where if you pay for it, you actually get your, your money's worth. Um, Just yes. a second, Stacey. Okay. Um, I would like to answer some of these questions. Somebody asked how many characters in a state, uh, screenplay? Eight. And uh, that's well. That's the, that was the stage play. Oh, the, stage play. I'm the sorry. screenplays you want to keep them down to the minimum because there's. I don't think there's really a set um, number on screen screenplays. It's just the, the fewer that you have, the more likely that someone will pay attention to it because the more characters you have means more money. And, and we're talking named characters that actually have something to do with the uh, story. Uh, we're not talking about the NPC, the non-player character, the bar, the bartender who serves the drinks. We're talking about actual actual people who have to say lines in the movie beyond um, what do you want to drink? <laughs> yes, and one of our uh, our people here said you can't. I. Um, you can't break the rules if you don't know what they are. Very that's true. That's true. Uh, uh, with all, uh, with everything. Okay. Yeah. You know, there is always going to be an exception. Um, in fact, one person I, I think of a lot uh, with that who actually knew the rules. I don't know how many arguments we had over over uh, screenplays. Was I kept telling them, "You are a wonderful, wonderful writer." But why do you keep messing up the format? I mean, if you have a chance of, you know, one in a trillion to get your screenplay out there and change it to one in a million with just a couple of tweaks, um, why aren't you doing that? It's, you know, you're getting better odds here. Um, and then I realized recently that he was a stage play writer and to try and translate to a screenplay was extremely difficult for him. And, and in a way it was kind of sad because he was making everything harder on himself because they weren't, they were changes that were obvious. They didn't really, he was shooting himself in the foot rather than being, you know, uh, Terry Pratchett. <laughs> I mean, Harry Pratchett broke the fourth wall. He did a lot of things that were against the rules, but he did them beautifully. And if you're just going to break the rules, just to break, break the rules, be ornery, but that's not going to get you very far in, in whatever format that you, that you do. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of a bummer that, uh, with that. Um, did you want to say something? Oh, I always want to say something. But... <laughs> <laughs> Mostly, I'd just like to say that um, looking at the various formats and understanding how the rules change depending upon um, uh, the environment. Is this going to be a stage play? Is it going to be a screenplay? Is it going to be a novel? Uh, this book and the rules actually changed the way I approach a story. Um, I look at all new things now. How many characters am I dumping on the reader? Uh, how quickly am I doing it? Uh, are these characters necessary? Or could I have done it more simply? Uh, because when I pick up a book, and I you know some people are great, and they can read, you know, it has 30, 30 characters, and you have to remember all of them. I can't do that. Why would why would somebody uh, cut down the number of people who can read their book simply because 
for one of 30 characters. I mean, if you really, really want to, sure, go right ahead, but know the risk that you're taking in doing it. Um, another thing that I loved about this book is when you talk about screenplays and stage plays, they have a very, very thick timeline. And that timeline really translates to, to books because it, it talks about character arc, it talks about story arc, and you should have, you know, your, your oh no, you know, all this lost moment about, you know, three quarters to the end, not in the middle. Don't do that. You can only carry tension so far, and you need to build up to it and build up to it. So um, if you're a plotter like me, I plot out my books. Of course, some people... <laughs> I'm insane. What yeah. Say? <laughs> yeah. But she makes it work somehow. I don't get it. I'm a plotter. I needed this book to show me some of the mistakes that I am likely to make just because it's not natural for me. And that was the that was in the first section that he's talking about. That's why he loves this particular book so much. And I would yeah, recommend reading the, the first section to just about anybody who, who wants to do whatever format. Um, but the the actual format, like I said, um, this is like 90 to 120 pages. So if you don't have the inciting incident by page 10, um, you're doing something wrong. Um, that's one thing about reading reading this book. You will then find yourself looking at movies and saying okay it's how far into this this should be happening in the next oh couple of minutes you know where is it um i know i if if a, if a movie doesn't keep hold my attention i start analyzing it <laughs> it's not good <laughs> that takes about three minutes for her <laughs> um but yeah, this, it's it's a very, very different style. And I don't know if anybody knows, um, I don't know if you can really see this. That's part of a, a screenplay. And that means there's a lot of, of um, white space in a screenplay. And yes, we have a five minute warning. I guess we should have asked for an hour. But I didn't really think um, we would go too far into it. Um, if you, if anybody has any other questions we'd you know more than happy to um well, Moog wants to know mm. why this is so hard why is screenplay writing so hard well, i know you, what i would answer okay but uh, it is so condensed and the rules are so specific you have to have this happen at this time this happen at this time not too many characters uh you have to boil your your conversation down to the most critical elements. You're not going to write, you know, uh, a page about the look of the city. Uh, you know, you don't have that that luxury. You have to boil this and condense it. But by doing that, you stick to the most salient points and your story can be stronger. You're not, you're not delivering fluff. If a reader is going to go, oh, why am I reading this? Yeah, it's it's there's a there's a lot to it, and I found I I've only done two screenplays, um, and even though I have the book and I have the program, and trust me, you need the program otherwise you will go insane. Um, I found it too restrictive for me. I, I I like being able to you know get in somebody aside, get in some inside someone's head, and you know. Telling somebody um, about something, um, I'm not. I guess I'm really not that visual, visually oriented. I'm I'm more mentally ori oriented, and so I found novel writing much easier than screenplays. And this is one of the reasons why they say that if you're a good screenplay writer, you're probably not going to be a very good novelist, and vice versa. And it's because these are two totally different animals. Um, and it's it's very hard for a lot of people to condense something that far, um, and it's it's just 
it's very restrictive and very formulaic. Um, you know, you like I said, you can be Victor Hugo and have this big long description of something, um, but it's not going to work in a screenplay. It works more in a novel. So you have a lot more wiggle room in a novel than you do in a screenplay. For that matter, a stage play. Um, though I guess you can be a lot more wordy in a stage play. <laughs> mm. Well, I'm afraid we have to. Oh, bummer. Bummer. Well, we'll see you again for world building and what was the other one we were supposed to do? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll see you again. Bye.